What's going on people, it's your boy Forty. Now it's been a busy 24 hours to say the least for Newcastle United. Not only did we get through uh, a pre-season friendly game unscathed against Hearts, but we found out a few things uh, regarding the squad. We found out that De Jong and Save are still alive and still have possible futures at the club. Uh, both played pretty well. Um, obviously De Jong got an assist and Save came on and did pretty well as well. We also found out pretty much Krull and Darlow's days are numbered at the club. Both keepers look set to be sold on and Woodman looks like to be promoted to at least second choice goalkeeper. Dwight Gale's back to the goal scoring ways, which is always good to hear. Um, and who else is there? Oh, and of course, Hayden, Richie and Yedlin are still nurse injuries, so they're not 100% as of yet. But the rest of the squad still have a point to prove. Uh, and Ben was definitely not a right back or shouldn't be really risked at right back so I think we need another right back although Jesus Gomez did look alright but this is a pre-season friendly albeit against Hearts no offence Hearts fans but it is what it is and um, apart from that we still need a lot more to bring in now starting off with the big news from today which is of course Jacob Murphy now apparently the bid has been up the last bid of £8 million was rejected and you know what Norwich are within their rights to reject it they're not a selling club or don't need to be a selling club they're not in debt from as far as I know they've got a new manager in charge who actually might want to use Murphy but the only thing in our favour is that the fact that he's a fan of the club and he wants to come to us because if it was us against another club and he didn't and he wasn't a fan of us I don't think we'd have the same chances as as the other club that's interested now bearing in mind with the other two transfers they've been semi straightforward in that sense as Atsu already played with us for a season so he already knew what he was getting himself into Lejeune from what, as far as I'm aware there was no one else that was interested in him so again as soon as we come up against some competition we are screwed because we keep faffing about and keep messing around with these figures then we're going to lose out on a lot more transfers than we have done already Abraham, Caballero just a couple of names that Rafa didn't get through the door and from what I'm hearing, he's fuming at the fact that he's not got them through the door. Anyway, so the bid has been up to £10 million plus add-ons. Because again, they're still holding out for £60 million. And again, as I said before, they're within their rights to do that. Because that's what they have as a figure. And that's what potentially they think they're going to get. Now, this is the second bid. I still think there's going to be more. I still think we're going to have to at least go to £12 or £14 million. And with an add-on add-ons as well. Because you don't know what those add-ons are going to be. Most most probably going to be around first team appearances, whether it's going to be 20 appearances, 30 appearances. They're not looking to see those add-ons until the end of this season coming or the following season. So they want to get as close to that £60 million as quickly as possible. So I don't think they're really going to accept the £10 million. I could be wrong. I hope I am wrong. But again, if, I'm, if I understand football and understand the business side of it, if they set a figure, they want to get as close to it as possible. So again, I think we're going to have to stump up a couple more million up front first and then start thinking about add-ons later on as well. Now, also in the review yesterday, the Hearts Review, I was talking about Lewis Gibson, who's a youngster at the club. Just been seeing a couple more opinions on, on social media regarding Lewis Gibson. Now, if you don't know who he is, he's part of our youth team, got a brother at the club called Liam as well. He's part of our reserve as well. 16 years of age, left back, can play centre half. Uh, I believe he made like over 112 appearances last season and he's been promoted to the, the reserve squad and now he's in advance towards from what I understand with Everton. Now here's the stickler because he's only 16 years of age, he's on a scholarship contract which means Everton can swoop in, take him and will get not not get a penny for him that's the thing Newcastle United have offered him a, a proper professional contract which means if he does go to Everton while he's on that contract he will or we will get some money from or compensation for him probably around about three to five million pounds whatnot but again it's just annoying me the fact that we're trying to build here not only with the first team but with the reserve squad as well Rafa came in and obviously he's changed things around with the first team, but he's also looked at the reserve team as well. And I'm sure he's not going to be too happy about losing a promising prospect because it's happened too many times down the years. You know, Shearer being one of them. Yes, he came back to play for his boyhood club, but think about all the years that he was playing at Southampton and Blackburn before he came to Newcastle. Now, to imagine if we had him all throughout those years. Who knows what we could have done? Carrick, he never played for Newcastle United despite being from Wall's End or playing for Wall's End. 
Um, you know, the likes of Beardsley and Gascoigne, yes, they did, you know, play for the club eventually, but again, they've had to go elsewhere to come back to the club. And then it looks like the same thing might happen again. You know, he's a local guy, I believe he's from County Durham, and yet he's going to be going to somewhere else. Imagine if he ends up being the next Leighton Baines and we have to pay, what, 20 odd million pounds to get him back to the club that he played for. We need to sort this out as well as the first team out as well. So, again, it looks like it could be a great acquisition from Everton. They're snapping up everyone at the moment, um, especially young English talent as well. They've got the likes of Michael Keane there. They've got Jordan Pickford. They even got the experience of Rooney there who can nurture the next generation through. So it's a, it's a shrewd acquisition by Everton. But at the same time, we're letting ourselves down and doing ourselves a disservice by not holding on to our youngsters, especially the promising ones as well. Final piece of information that I've gathered is about Fabrizio Colacini, our ex-captain. Now, he moved on to Pastures New what, last season or the season before that, which was at San Lorenzo, his dream club, the club that he supported as a boy. And now he's been told to move on as well. So um, I don't know what you want to make of that one. <laughs> it is what it is. End of the day, apparently the new coach just wants to shake things up and he's getting rid of quite a few experienced players. His dad, Colaccini's dad, has been quite vocal about it as well and obviously he's not happy about it considering he signed a three-year deal at the club and obviously he's only been there a season or two. So um, it's pretty, pretty disappointing for someone who's played, what, over 20-odd years in Europe and now he's gone back to his dream club and now he's been told that he's only good enough for a season. I don't think he's going to be offered like a coaching role or anything like that. So a bit of a bitter end for Colaccini, but, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, that's enough for me, guys. So I'll let you know what I think about the Murphy transit if it goes through. Hopefully we put in a substantial bid that Norwich will feel is acceptable. And I hope, I'm hope i hoping the Gibson whole saga comes to an end somehow. Whether, whether we get some money for him or he actually stays at the club and says, you know what, my future here is at Newcastle. Um, hopefully we get something out of it because it would be a shame to lose such a talent at this age and then what seven to eight years down the line he proves to be like an England international um, like further down the line and we're kicking ourselves that we basically got one or two million for him as well also to add to the Murphy saga as well it's also uh, prominent that he's been actually dropped from the Norwich City side that's playing Cambridge United today in a friendly as well so adding more fuel to the fire it looks like he's on his way out he's out of the friendly because basically the club don't want to injure him and he's probably not in the right frame of mind to play for him anyway. So it looks like he's on his way to Newcastle United anyway. It's just us having to pull our finger out and get the money in that we also have anyway. We're not struggling to put a substantial bid in for him. Same old story. Anyway, that's enough for me. I'll see you guys all soon. Keep it tuned. Peace.